Welcome to my lecture online. A very big part of the reasons to why we actually exist has to do with the amazing property of the metal iron, or the element iron as I should call it. So there's this element on the periodic table, iron, which is unique compared to all the other elements on the periodic table, and if that uniqueness wasn't there, we probably wouldn't exist. There's a reason why. And the reason is that that was the only way that the elements on the periodic table could have been created and could have been spread into the universe so that we could actually utilize that, and not us personally, but the sun and the solar system could utilize that material to make a solar system unique as ours. So let me explain. So there are a lot of stars in the Milky Way galaxy, and of course there's hundreds of billions of galaxies, so you can imagine the number of stars there are throughout the entire universe. But if we just concentrate on the stars in our galaxy, there's about 250 billion of them. And the vast majority contains just hydrogen and helium. And it turns out what all stars do, they have a core. And inside the core, when the temperature exceeds 10 million Kelvin, the core begins to fuse, which is a nuclear process, hydrogen into helium. So essentially, four hydrogens over a period of steps are then pushed together due to the enormous activity in the core because of these enormous temperatures, it pushes them together to form helium. And when that happens, the, some of the mass is lost, about 0.3% of the mass that was originally contained in the hydrogen was lost when that got converted to helium, and that mass loss is then used to generate the enormous amount of heat and energy that a star produces. So it actually uses the E equals mc squared concept, where some of the mass that's lost by this conversion from hydrogen to helium then gets turned into energy, and that is what produces the enormous amount of energy that all stars are able to put out into the environment. Our sun is no exception. So all stars do that. But eventually the cores will fill with helium and this process will stop because the fuel necessary to do this process will simply stop and then the core begins to collapse. As the core collapses, temperatures go, go up and when the temperatures reach 100 million Kelvin, then the temperatures are hot enough for the helium to be converted to carbon. That produces even more energy due to the mass loss when this process happens in such a way that the, that the, the star will, will swell up to enormous size and then it becomes what we call a red giant. And then a furious space, helium will be converted to carbon. And again, this happens in all stars and eventually our sun will do the same. But then at the end, when the whole core fills up with carbon, then of course the core begins to collapse again because it's no longer generating any energy. And then two things can happen. Either the core collapses into a small ball called the white dwarf, which is about the size of the Earth, and then you have this big hot ball, well, depends how you want to look at it, it's the size of the Earth, that makes it big, but it's very small compared to the original star, and that then contains the core remains of the star, which is essentially a big ball of carbon. But we can get to that carbon because it's now locked gravitationally within that white dwarf. So, at this point, there would not be any elements available to use other than hydrogen and helium to make up stars and new planets. So again, where, does all, where do all the elements come from that make up our body and make up the Earth? Well, there's a very tiny percentage of stars which are so large that there's so much temperature created from the collapse of the core that it can actually go beyond fusing carbon. It actually can start fusing oxygen, neon, magnesium, and so forth down the line of the periodic table by temperatures that now will exceed 1 billion Kelvin in the core. And this process will continue because every time you fuse a lighter element into a heavier element, you take some of the mass and convert that mass into energy according again to this equation that Einstein came up with. So this process continues, the star continues to put out copious amount of energy, but then finally the core will begin to form iron and then slowly the whole core will then fill with iron and when the whole core is filled with iron then of course the core stops that process starts collapsing generates even higher temperatures in order to try to fuse the next elements like cobalt and nickel on the periodic table but the problem is well not really a problem the saving grace so to speak 
our existence depends on what is going to happen next. It turns out that iron is this unique element on the periodic table. When you try to fuse iron into the next heavy element, of course that pretty well only happens inside the cores of the supermassive stars, well when that happens, instead of generating heat, it actually extracts heat out of the core. So instead of providing the energy to keep the star shining and to keep the star at its massive size that it is, it's a red supergiant of enormous dimensions, since energy is not being pulled out of the core, the, car, the core can no longer hold its shape, the core begins to collapse because of the lack of radiation, radiation energy to keep it in that shape, and the core of the star begins to collapse at a very rapid pace. That then causes the temperatures to continue to increase, the fusion process continues, and eventually the whole, car just, the whole core just collapses in itself, and you have a supermassive type 2 supernova, as we call it. This giant explosion, the star just blows itself apart. In the enormous temperatures generated, the other elements on the periodic table, heavier than iron, are generated with that enormous, massive explosion. This is where all the other elements of the periodic table are generated. Nowhere else. There's no other process in the universe that does that. So now we have this massive explosion and the debris of the star is pushed out into the galaxy. And that happened where we are 4.53 billion years ago. That material then spread out, it smashed into nebulas nearby. Nebulas primarily containing hydrogen and helium, and again, nebulas, when they are compressed sufficiently and you have enough gravitational force, it can collapse into a star and planets like a solar system. One of the events that can make that happen is the pressure from one of those big supernova explosions, and that's what happened 4.53 billion years ago. The pressure of the explosion and all the infusion in the material caused this nebula to collapse, High enough density was reached for a star to gravitationally begin to form with its planets, and that's how our solar system formed. It only formed, and only these materials were available to make the four terrestrial planets, including Earth, because they were created inside this supermassive explosion, this Type II supernova explosion. If that explosion had happened, we wouldn't be here. And that explosion can only happen because iron has this unique property that if you try to fuse iron into the next heavy element, instead of, instead of giving off energy, it actually absorbs energy out of the core. And that unique property allowed us to exist. That's food for thought. If it wasn't for iron doing that, we wouldn't be here talking about it. The miracle of life, the miracle of us and the Earth existing, in part, depends upon that property of iron. What about Pluto? <laughs> what, what about Pluto? Yes, yes, we have all kinds of little dwarf planets way out there that are made out of primarily frozen ice and maybe some rock. But yeah, that is the formation of the solar system. So there is, of course, comets and meteors and all kinds of other stuff. But Pluto is primarily made of, of frozen ice. So it's not the it's not really the same stuff. Now we do find some of the, like the core of Jupiter is presumed to have also rocky material, which again is made out of silicon and oxygen. So some of the material made in those big heavy planets also contains some of the stuff that we have in the terrestrial planets.